Hey guys, Cargo here. Hey, so today I'm excited to bring you kind of a preview of some of the information from the Ord Online Feature Roadmap Vote Number Two. Uh, first of all, if uh, if you're wondering why I haven't got the email just yet, it's going to go out on Monday, uh, probably, um, and the actual time when the voting will stop would be on like Thursday. So you guys should have plenty of time to all get it, read over it, answer back. Um, so, but if you're wanting it right now, uh, you can uh, message the devs on Twitter, and uh, they'll privately send you a link for it. Um, you know, if you are one of the parties that has uh, multiple keys um, because you bought a larger package, uh, please make sure to contact everyone who's going to be using those keys and have them fill it out as well, because we'd like to hear from them and hear what they're excited about as well. Um, so I'll get right to it. The big thing, of course, is the feature vote. And we'll talk about what each one is. Uh, the four up are beacons, portals and warps, character races, and creature one. Um, you know, all of these are awesome choices. Uh, each one offers something of value. Um, and so I'll just kind of go over what each one is and why it's useful. Beacons is to protect buildings and structures. Yes, we've increased in size. Uh, there are other people. Um, but given that the devs are willing to drop beacons on major works and it's pretty easy to repair minor damage, I don't know that this is the highest priority of the group. Um, I get the value in it, but I think it can wait over some other things. Uh, portals and warps are great. That would be really cool to set these up and travel between the worlds, but I don't think we have really a great reason that players really need to link the worlds just yet. Um, I don't see there being a big motive building a transit network before there's really a reason to engage in transit or travel. Um, character races nobody likes being an orange cube i can totally feel you if you vote for this one um it's awesome i would love to actually see some of the character races all of you know i've been pushing hard for monkeys but i think that all of the first three are secondary considerations when you consider what creatures one is now first of all creatures one is um, a pretty bad name for it. Um, it's extremely deceptive and I wish they would rename this and kind of rebrand it to change the marketing a little bit. This should really be called PVE content number one. Um, just to show you what it is, whoops, there, let me pull up uh, good old word. Um, what it is is temples, uh, the mobs that populate them, <laughs> um, let's see, Temples that populate them and the loot that actually drops from them. You can see here protectors or temples loot. I mean, this is essentially the vast majority of what PVE content's going to be in Ord Online. And I think we're kind of at a point in the game now where this really needs to be the highest priority in development. Because what's happened is people have shown up, they play the game, they like the game, it looks good, it looks exciting. They get tired of walking around because there's not that much replay value at the moment. And so eventually they wane off after they check it out. They buy, you know, we get some backers and that's good. Um, but to really help drive sales and to really keep the YouTube fire going and get more people into the community and keep them involved in the community, we really need more replay value to the game. And creatures is what really gives us that. I mean, yeah, we could get characters, you can take some screenshots, but then you're going to log off. You're going to drop beacons on some stuff, great, but then we're still right where we are at the moment. I really think that getting the bulk of what I consider to be core gameplay um, is really what's going to be driving sales in the game. So... Uh, let me see what else I got here on my notes. Uh, yeah, all the other features, if you look at them, I mean, in, excluding these three, all of the other features in the game fundamentally revolve around this. You could argue, yes, PvP is another game in and of itself. It will be, but most of the game needs to be fleshed out before we go down the PvP road um, because we need to know how the mechanics work, or work and operate and how the tools and things interact before you design the actual PvP experience. But you know, creatures is something we can implement now. They could bring the temples online and those start showing up. Then they could progressively add NPCs to the temples. And then ultimately the NPCs, when we kill them, they could actually drop uh, loot. So it's something that can kind of be incrementally in added that gives us something exciting to do as it's being rolled out. Um, a lot of the other features in here, if you really care, study them carefully, a lot of them go to support what the ultimate 
you know, core gameplay experience is. You know, an economy's good, money's good, but buying and selling stuff really isn't useful if there's no reason to buy sell, uh, buy or sell something. You're in a guild, but why are you in a guild? What does your guild actually do? And that's why defining kind of the base gameplay is really kind of a top priority. We don't want to wait till we're close to release or at release or something like that before we really start fleshing out what is this game? Because that's what is this game is what we need to be selling to people going forward to build it up. And then the great part is, is once you actually get core gameplay in place, or at least somewhat fleshed out, or a skeletal structure of it at least, then people kind of, when the other features come online subsequently, like guilds, economy, farming, they enhance that existing experience versus kind of existing in almost like a vacuum of sorts. So I think that's why it's really important that we vote and begin to go down the Creature One roadmap, uh, or the Creature One path. Um, I see. You know, another game that's a real good example of this, uh, if you ever tried it, it's free to play. It was called Doofus and um, had this anime art style to it. I tried it. You know, I had the basic elements of an MMO. Um, but, you know, I probably would have stopped playing it after a short time, except that they had these really neat dungeon concepts in the game where you would grind in the kind of normal world environment and eventually, under certain conditions, you can get your hands on a dungeon key. Then you would take this dungeon key with your group and you would go and unlock a door and then you would run through this kind of relatively uh, scripted dungeon experience with a boss at the end and mobs, um, you know, kind of reminiscent of like a raid or something from other games. Um, and it was really fun. I really got excited about trying to get my hands on a dungeon key so I could run through that with my friends. It was a really big deal, and I really liked that, and it added a lot of replay value to that game and kept me playing it for a long time, long after the other kind of basic mechanics of the game kind of ceased to be interesting. So I think that's relative here, where we're starting to see that that kind of core experience... Uh, if we can start to form that, we can start to sell that and kind of get people more excited about the game. Um, let's see, what else we got? You know, and in that gameplay experience that I'm talking about trying to construct by voting for Creatures 1 is the thing that people can't get in other voxel games right now, right? If we bring the other features online, they can get those elsewhere. Uh, we really want to bring online something that is unique to us that says, look, this is what Ord is. You can't do this somewhere else. Uh, this is why you want to play the game. And really, that that feature being in place is what would help to drive the sales and kind of progress the community. Um, let's see what else we got here. Oh, yeah. And it adds the most replay value to the game. I mean, look, look at the features. Think about them. How much replay value does beacons add? Portals, warps, having a character. And how much does the PvE content add to replay? How much time will you be spending in order if they implement feature 1, 2, 3, or 4? And that's why I think ultimately everyone probably should vote for Creatures 1. So, anyways, that's kind of my thoughts on that one. You know, they changed up the voting system a little bit here. Um, they switched everything to a do it now, do it before 1.0, do it later, never do it. Uh, and I really kind of like that uh, priority scheme. I think that's a neat way of thinking about it. Now, I'm not going to go through all the features in the vote. Um, I did another video before this where I did analyze them all, and it was terrible. I'm going to hit the really big points from that video that I talked about that I want to emphasize. Um, if you scroll down here, the one where they talk about quest, that caught my attention. Uh, quest to earn currency, ort lore, and in-game play. These are things I think we should see now, um, or begin to reveal. Because, you know, one of the things I took away from the LEGO Master Builder program is that when you're building a structure or an object or a machine, it helps to have a story that helps you imagine what this is being used for or why it's relevant. You know, why should a player want to go inside of that house. What is its purpose? Is it an inn? Is it a guild hall? Is it um, some sort of storage facility, right? You can't really begin to appreciate why you're building something in a game that has purpose until you actually flesh out what the mechanics of that experience are. And so that's kind of why I think we should go 
uh, we should see some more of the uh, the actual quest and the lore of the game and kind of what the mechanics of PvE content will ultimately be like. And I think that that really is the do it now at the moment. Everything else is kind of like a secondary consideration because until you have that, the other features don't really add that much until you can kind of see what the game really is. Um, you know, you know, it engages you more when there's a story. Like you begin to care about worlds a lot more than just looking at them from like a tech demo perspective. You start to become kind of immersed in the world and immersed in the story. Where the buildings you build begin to have purpose. The cities we construct begin to have a meaningful purpose if there's a story um, kind of being fleshed out for us. Or even just once again, even the skeletal structure. Anything. Throw me a bone. Um, so let me see what else oh you know they did mention one thing in here that i do want to point out uh where is it real money purchases i want shortcuts i tag this never um here's my thoughts on rmt leave that for the china farmers um even if you had some fantastical cosmetic system that's great you're going to be dogged with accusations of play to win if you guys go down that road i just steer clear of it um you know, if it comes down to it that, you know, we need a, uh, a finance mechanism built into the game, go for subs. You know, a lot of people don't realize this. Subscription fees are a lot cheaper than RMT is. And uh, micro tranny. It is way cheaper to pay a sub. And you get a lot more content if you actually go down the sub road than if you go down micro tranny. Um, so please don't do that. <laughs> it, it's going to be bad for everybody if you do. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about, player hosted servers. Well, this is really interesting because I didn't even think this was part of it. And there's a reason I didn't think this was part of ORT or even possibility of it. I, I understand that's why we're voting on it to get people's opinion. Um, but I'd like to take a minute to talk about it. Uh, on player hosting uh, their own servers. Um, I voted never on this, and I know there's a lot of people that will disagree with me on that. Uh, but I wanted to take a minute to explain to you why I said never. Um, everybody wants something for nothing. The problem is, is that if you want ORT to continue to exist on an ongoing basis, there has to be money coming from somewhere to continue development of the game. Uh, Game development, obviously, as you're beginning to learn, if you're a part of the community, is not exactly cheap. Um, these people work. They work full time. Uh, it's going to have to come from somewhere if you want to see content continually added to the game. And the problem is, is that we did something which is, I think is smart. We moved away from subscription fees and we moved the business model to rent on um, servers, meaning the power players are really eating the true cost of continuing the existence of the MMO. Um, so that's great because, you know, kids and teens, they don't have jobs. They don't necessarily have the money to pay an ongoing sub. Um, so that allows a lot more people to be a part of the game, but shifting the cost to the people who can probably honestly afford to eat it. Um, and where everyone benefits. The problem is, is if you go to player-hosted servers, you're kind of burning the candle from both ends because now you're saying, okay, now you could buy the game, which is dirt cheap, not pay a sub, and ultimately host your own servers. Um, I just... <laughs> I, I get the argument that, okay, those servers are lesser quality, it's not attached to the main ORT cloud, whatever, they're running a splinter chart. That's good, but I think a big chunk of the revenue is going out the door when players host kind of their own servers um, for the game, even if it is a splinter shard, um, because that revenue is being kind of removed from the main pool of development that could have been going to actually develop the first party game that I want to play and most of the people who are serious about financing this ultimately really do want to play. Um, we want that money being going back into Ord Online and having the first party developers build the game. Yeah, leave the door open for third party development. That's cool. I like modding. I like it. Because a lot of times better ideas come out of the third party and get back fed into the single party. But at the same time, I don't want, 
I want people that are serious about the game to help contribute to the ongoing existence of the game. Uh, and that really is why we need rent to be the mainstay business model. You know, you can't have it all. And so you have to pick where is the financial burden going to fall. And I think that's kind of the best place for it. And that's why I said, you know, probably don't do third parties, uh, third party hosting. So, and keep in mind, we're not trying to compete with Minecraft. We're not building the same thing they did. We're going in a different direction because we have a different set of goals and priorities. So, you know, a bit more refined game with a little bit more central management is a good thing because we're trying to build a quality MMO versus, you know, a fragmented environment. So, um, the last thing I want to talk about is PvP worlds. They talked about that on what type of combat do you want. Uh, you know, I obviously, you can already tell, I want the single unified MMO <laughs> uh, uh, type of environment where we all build and play and interact together in kind of a, uh, a high quality environment. Um, the other thing is on PvP, you know, th this has been talked about several times. PvP is polarizing. Uh, there's no doubt about it. If you read the results of the first survey, uh, you, people love it or they hate it. They're either here for PvP or they're probably here for PvE. Um, so I think, you know, option one, all worlds PvP, yeah, good luck. There goes, you know, 90% of the player base right there. So that's not happening. Uh, all worlds PvE, uh, but players somehow opt into PvP, you're relegating that to duels between friends and pre-existing conditions, and people are never going to agree to combat unless it's advantageous to them. That's not a really good system that you're basically removing substantive PvP from the game if you do that, you know, or uh, guild versus guild battles where, you know, it has to be initiated somehow, but the other players in the world aren't a part of it. That that really doesn't lend itself well to PvP. Um, I mean, most of the fun interactions I've had have been in free form open world uh, where you engage people at different times. Sometimes it's structured, sometimes it's not structured. Uh, there are benefits to both. But I think really to satisfy everybody who's funding the game, we really need to do the world solution like James talked about. You know, there are PvP worlds, there are PvE worlds. They're safely delineated from each other, marked and identified, so you don't actually wind up on one you don't want to be on. Um, but you need that partition so that people that want that PvP experience still have it, they're satisfied, and the people that don't want to have anything to do with it, they still have their PvP, or I'm sorry, PvE nexus of worlds, and those people are still happy and satisfied. And I think the world level solution kind of gives us the uh, best, best compromise. Um, uh, let's see. And then finally, character races. If you don't know, one word to describe the character race you want to play as is most. Vote monkey. Uh, think Donkey Kong. Think Diddy Kong. Think a monkey ball. Think of all the other games where you've seen anthropomorphic uh, monkey creatures in. You know, uh, we can look to Chima as a great, you know, Lego set to help give us inspiration because, you know, Lego does all of their research based off studying little kids to figure out what they like. Look at the character races in Shima. And monkeys are awesome. Um, lots of neat concept artists come out for different ones, and I just think that would be the most interesting uh, race to play as that I'm the most excited about. There's lots of joke material if we go with monkeys, uh, you know, so I'm really excited. Please vote monkeys. So, anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope it was uh, insightful for you, and I can't wait to see the results of this, and I'll see you guys in-game.